still morning, right? <laughs> Glory to God. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? What a blessing in God's presence. What a blessing in God's presence. Without his presence, we're nothing. Hallelujah. God's on the move. He's never stopped. You know, one of the things about the praise and worship, when you and I are praising and worship, we're actually creating an atmosphere for him. Amen? We're creating an atmosphere for the presence of the Lord. And by creating an atmosphere for the presence of the Lord, it allows the Lord to bring judgment on darkness. We get convicted. There's things that happen in God's presence, things that you didn't see before that you now see. Actually, this is what's happening in the world. Judgment is not only in the house of God, but it's in the world right now. Remember, judgment comes before wrath. So God is judging the wicked. What is he actually doing? Think about this. Globally, he's created an atmosphere for him. Globally. That's why right now he's driving out everything because he's created an atmosphere on this earth for him. So it will be a place where you and I will thrive. Things are changing. Changing tremendously, rapidly. That's why it's so important to be connected, plugged in, be able to hear, see, and receive. The Lord God Almighty, the King of glory, the Father of all creation, for His body is un unifying them, the head and the body. And in this, He is going to remove all all darkness. Darkness will flee, and the ones that are caught will be arrested. But it's happening all over globally because he's going to create an atmosphere on the earth for his return. This will be a part of the final day harvest. December will be a, a month to remember. There will be tremendous things happening this month. Tremendous. In fact, if you look up and see what's happening already, there are so many people that have been arrested, involved in corruption, smuggling. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, a $45 billion operation in Chicago by the, the, some of the political people in there trying to build some tr tr changing stuff, stealing money for Obama's um, library. I mean, it's incredible what's going on. These people are getting busted left and right. Some of them have already been in prison and sentenced. And now it's coming down the line. They just invaded, or they invaded. They just, um, you might say that, the FBI invaded some of their offices and everything. They just came out with all kinds of stuff. This just happened just a few days ago. It's going to happen globally. God Almighty is invading all darkness to create an atmosphere for him. Globally. And you and I are a part of it. Awesome. Yes, December will be a month to remember. We will see a lot of things happen this month. We are in a new transition. It's almost like a, I don't know how to say it. Uh, you know, when a new moon comes, this is where we're at right now. Everything is changing and shifting quickly and rapidly. And we want to be alert. How many of y'all want to be a blessing to God? You know, the word blessing is associated with gift. Think about this. It is a gift of blessing. Jesus was the gift from the Father. The Holy Spirit was the gift of Jesus. It was an area of giving. It was a blessing. So there is a gift of blessing because it is a gift in itself. You and I were taken from darkness to be a gift to the Father by Jesus. That means you and I are a blessing. Do you get, do you get this? We got to begin to look at the, man, you know, I'm blessed. No, you're a gift. 
You maintain this position by sanctification. In 1 John chapter 5. So when we say that we are blessed and highly favored, I'm a gift with favor. Don't get me wrong, it's not an arrogance thing that we are a gift from God. We are a, a gift to God from Jesus. Amen? 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. And we know that whoever is born of God does what? Does not what? Sin or does not agree with darkness or darkness's agenda. Amen? But he who has been born of God does what? He keeps himself from what? He does self-examination, aligning himself up with the Word of God. He keeps himself in the what? Wicked one does what? Not touch him. So again, you and I are born of God. We, that means that we, are, we don't agree with darkness agendas. We keep ourselves with self-examination by aligning ourselves, our lives, our decisions, our approvals with the Word of God. Verse 19. We know that we are of God. We are of God because we are blessed. And the whole world lies under the what? Sway of the wicked. When that arena of the world under the, it's actually under the control of the persuasion or influence of darkness. It is a persuasion. The world is under the control by the persuasion or influence of darkness to keep humanity blind to the truth. This is the curse of evil. And its purpose is to deny eternal life. It's trying to get people to either give up eternal life or prevent them from getting there. Again, it is the, this area of the sway under the wicked one because it is a sway, it is a persuasion it's controlled by the powers of darkness to influence darkness and keep humanity blind to the truth. This is a curse. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1. No, wait a minute. I ain't done yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 20. <laughs> and we know that the Son of God has come and given us a what? Understanding. You know, darkness can't understand the light. So only those that are walking in the light understand the light. So when a person has made choices to step out of the light into the darkness, they won't understand certain things. Why? Because the purpose of the enemy is to blind. And we know that the Son of God has come and had given us an understanding that we may know him who is what? True, and we are in him who is true, in his son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. First Corinthians 1. Gift of blessing. Today's title. Gift of blessing. 1 Corinthians 1. Hallelujah. Verse 26. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. 
But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. That as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. In other words, in Christ Jesus, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption are granted to me and you. These are areas, in other words, you cannot be sanctified and produce righteousness. It's impossible. The fruit of righteousness parallels with sanctification. If you're touching unclean things or certain things or, not, or disobedience or rebellious or whatever, you will not produce righteous fruits only in certain things that you might or at some times, but there will be no consistency there. Does everybody understand that? Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. What does the Bible tell us that? Rebellion is of what? Witchcraft. That means influence under the sway, under the persuasion. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 1. Again, without sanctification, separation, being set apart, there's limitations brought on individuals. Sanctification is holiness, which is the character of Christ. That means that there's a place where you and I are obeying, approving, and declaring his way of life and truth. We are aligned with the Bible. Everything that you and I do is always confirmed by what he wants, not by what we want. In verse 1, finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. Commandments through the Lord Jesus. These are requirements. Amen? For this is the will of God, your what? So what is the first part of the will of God? Your sanctification. It doesn't say your obedience because your obedience won't manifest without sanctification. That you should abstain from sexual immorality. That each of you should know how to what? Possess his own vessel in sanctification and in honor. That means fear of the Lord. Not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage of, of and defraud his brother in this matter. Because the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to what? Holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who also has given us his what? Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit a gift? Yes. Amen. 2 Corinthians 6. Is he a gift of blessing? Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Second Corinthians six. So the key is sanctification. Amen. Sanctification. In, in the sanctification, one of the things that's required is priority. Priority. Divine order. Priority. When a person is not sanctified, divine order is out of place. Priority is out of place. Self is usually first. Does a problem with denying self. There's an area where the I want syndrome. Now 
There's a lot of things that rely on sanctification. Verse 14, here's, here's a requirement for sanctification. Do not be what? Unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? I'm sharing with you right now that there are things in our lives that God is going to say, this is all, this got to go. There are associations that say, look, this has got to go. Because people will miss many things from God. There are things of your life that God is trying to say, let it go. Why? Because anything that's not sanctified should not be connected to us. Verse 16. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them. I will walk among them. I'll be their God, their creator. And they will be my people. Therefore, what? Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And don't touch. Don't agree. Don't associate with us unclean. And don't approve. And especially don't vote. And I will receive you. And I'll be a father to you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. That last part, verse 18, and I will be a father, father to you. That is what lacks when there's not true sanctification. It may be here in the mind, but it isn't here in the heart. You may call him father, but you don't act like his daughter or son. There's a difference. It's in the heart. It's inside. It's not just thoughts. You can say, well, he's my father, but I'm going to choose what I want. That's not father-son relationship. Sanctification always keeps things in relationship, divine order. Purity, holiness, the character of Christ. Again, that's why we are seeing right now all over the world. God is creating an atmosphere for him and for his body. And anything that you're associating with that's unclean is going to reject his transition and creation of an atmosphere in your life. He will not allow it. Amen? Again, he says, come out from the persuasion of darkness and the approval of their agendas <laughs> and their celebrations, their rituals, and their traditions. You know, we are entering a time now where we're entering holidays and things of that degree, so there are celebrations of certain things. And you're going to hear a lot of things. And don't get me wrong, there are paganism. There's things that are paganistic. You know, even on December 25th, when Jesus was not born on December 25th, okay? But he was conceived. Nine months later, he was born on the Feast of Trumpets. Known as First Fruits. But Nimrod was born on the 25th of December. So there's a pagan ritual. But there's a lot of pagan rituals, isn't there? At one time, I wouldn't associate with any of that until the Holy Spirit grabbed hold of me. He said, quit being so religious. He said, whatever you touch to change the sanctification will. We don't worship a tree. We realize the tree represents the tree of life. The lights that go on the tree is because he's the light giver. See, we turn everything around. They can try and paganize it all that they want. We give gifts because it's a blessing from the greatest gift, Jesus Christ to mankind. Now, there are certain rituals that we do not associate with, like halloween -y. That's demonic intently. Even Thanksgiving, we give thanks for him. Easter is Jesus' resurrection, but we don't chase bunnies. Amen? So there's a, a pagan ritual on everything because the devil tries to contaminate anything that we try to celebrate associated with Jesus. Amen? But we keep things sanctified when he contaminates. There's the difference. 
That's why we must live a life of sanctification. We celebrate the Sabbath. People don't even realize that every Friday night's the Sabbath. <laughs> Amen? And, but Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. So every day is the Sabbath for me and you, as long as you're obeying and following him. Amen? We acknowledge the feast of the Lord. Everyone should acknowledge the feast of the Lord. That doesn't mean you have to celebrate every single one. Israelites were required for that, but we know about it. We take the feast of the Lord as an area of time sequence. The things that are getting ready to happen are things that have happened. Because that's what the feasts of the Lord are about. Amen? In Psalm 119. Hallelujah. Psalm 119. Thank you, Jesus. In verse 1. What's the first word? Bless. What's that mean? Gift. Gift. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. In other words, you're blessed because you're a gift. Listen, don't you think obedience is a gift to God? So we want to be the special, precious gift of God Almighty as a sign of wonder to the world. It says, blessed are those who what? Keep his what? testimonies, who seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all of your commandments. I will praise you with uprightness of heart. When I learn of your righteous judgments, I will keep you statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to what? His word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Well, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Wow. Bless. Gift from God. Undefiled. Amen. Undefiled. Why? You're sanctified. What it was, so we got to maintain the sanctification life as a gift to God. <laughs> in response, his gift to me and you is eternal life. Amen. So we are exchanging gifts. See, we celebrate it every day. In Revelation 22. This year, Jesus. What did you get? <laughs> Hallelujah. I got Jesus and the Holy Spirit as a gift. <laughs> That's where our gift to the Father is our life. Amen. It's our life. We give our life as a gift. But we want, you know, we don't want to give a blemished life. We want to give a sanctified life to him. In Revelation 22, verse 13. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed. Everyone say blessed. What's that? A gift, right? Blessed are those who what? Do his commandments. 
that they may have the right to the tree of life. Whoa, what an exchange of gifts. And may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs. Those are demonized individuals. Sorcerers and sexual immoral and murderers and idolaters. And whoever loves and practices a what? A lie. Wow. These are outside. It says that only the blessed gift to God by obedience and sanctification will receive the gift from God that's access to the tree of life. So there's another exchange of gift, isn't there? Again, this is not a prideful and arrogance thing as being a gift to God. That's what Jesus was, whole focus was, was to come to turn us around so that we be a gift from him to the Father. Amen? <laughs> but it's not going to happen without sanctification. It's impossible. That's why he says, <laughs> learn from me. We have a saying, you're going to either learn or what? Burn. Psalm 34. So the Bible is the instruction manual on how to be a gift to God. So those who don't realize, read or understand or study or align their, their lives or their decisions up with the Word of God are not sanctified. And they're no longer a gift of God, to God. What did I say to go? Psalm 34. Let's speak it. I will what? Bless the Lord when? At all times. In other words, you want to be a blessing to the Lord by being a gift to him. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be what? Glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord. And he heard me, and he delivered me from all of my what? Fears. There's an exchange of gift. He delivers. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped all around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blesses the man who what? Trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. You notice it talks about trust. Blessed are those who trust. And then it says, and then at the end, and those who seek the Lord won't lack any good thing. Bless the Lord by what? Praise, worship, declaring the truth, testimony. Let's go a little further. He says, come, you children, and listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is a man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil or defilement and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Because the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do wicked to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their trouble. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as they have a contrite spirit. So by maintaining the fear of the Lord, is that a gift for God? Yes. You are blessed. You are a blessing. Many of the afflictions are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of what? All of them. He guards all of his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked. Evil shall slay the wicked. Amen? And we'll kick buck on the rest. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be what? Condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. And Galatians 3.
gift of blessing. Turn to your name and say, you're a gift of blessing. Glory. Verse 1. Galatians 3, all oh, foolish Galatians who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain. Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore, know that only those who are of the faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In all you, all the nations shall be what? Blessed. In other words, eventually everything will be a gift to God. But only those that are sanctified nations will be the gift to God. So then those who are of the faith are blessed with believing Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Curses everyone who does not continue in the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by what? Faith. That's relationship. Yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Curses everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Remember, the Holy Spirit is the keeper. Amen? He's the one that keeps us. He's the one that convicts us. He's the one that is always attempting to keep us sanctified. Brethren, I speak in a manner of men, though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it, if it uh, is confirmed, no one annuls or adds to it. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds as many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is who? Christ. Amen. In other words, the Holy Spirit is a gift from Jesus. Jesus is the gift from the Father. But the gift from the Holy Spirit is the guidance of all truth. I mean, we know that there's the gifts of the Spirit, amen, which are tools to operate in this realm so that we can overcome all areas and attacks of the enemy and be multiple steps ahead of him. But to be filled with the Spirit of God is essential. And the word says that we are blessed with every spiritual what? Blessing. So those are the gifts from God. As being a gift to him, he returns gifts to me and you. Again, we're on a constant life of exchanging gifts. And Psalm 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gift of blessing. In verse 1, what's the first word? Blessed. Now, what's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the what? Ungodly. Nor sits in the path of sinners. In other words, agrees. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But this, but his delight is in the what? Law of the Lord or the truth. And in his truth or his law he does. He meditates day and night. Why? So he can align himself up. It says he shall be like a what? A tree planted by the rivers of water, which is freshness all the time. 
that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither. And whatever he does shall what? Prosper. It's an exchange of gift. Prosper. But the ungodly are not so. But they are like chaff, which the wind drives away. In other words, they are dry. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the reward or the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? They shall what? They shall perish. Your gift of God is sanctification. And your gift from God is favor, ending in eternal life. Amen? And John chapter 9. Now, there is a process of sanctification. There is a formula. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, fight, and follow. <laughs> Amen. John chapter 9 and verse 30. Now, there was a man that was blind, and Jesus healed him. So they brought him in front of the Pharisees and Sadducees and the, so forth and Sanhedrin. And uh, actually, I kind of think it's kind of funny. Uh, and they were asking him, who, who healed us? How did this happen to you? In verse 30, and the man answered and said to them, why is it a marvelous thing that you do not know where he is from, yet he has opened my eyes? Now, we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears them. Since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opens the eyes of one who was born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered and said to him, you are completely born in sin and you are teaching us? <laughs> Boy, they didn't like that. And they cast him out. <laughs> and Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? And he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he did what? He worshipped him. <laughs> for Jesus said, for the judgment I have come into the world that those who do not see may see. And that those who see may be what? Oh, that is powerful. That's why many have become blind. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, are we blind also? And Jesus said, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, we see, therefore... Your sins remain. <laughs> Obviously, it was a gentle way of saying you're stinking blind. <laughs> Again, for me and you to believe, right, is to what? Follow. As you follow, you become the gift of God. And his gift is sight. Amen? That's why many have lost the gift of sight. Spiritual sight. Because their sanctification has been con contaminated or defiled. Those who once were able to see have lost sanctification, have lost their sight and their gift to God. 1 Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5. So we are blessed and highly favored because we are God's gift. Amen? We're God's gift. And we're his gift by sanctification. And we live a life of exchanging gift. You never know what he's going to bring to you. But the moment you fall out of sanctification, you fall out of divine order, you fall into self, how I feel, when I believe. 
and so forth. 1 Peter 5.5. 5. Let's speak it. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Now, this is another exchange of gift. Sanctification is associated with humility, humbleness. You can't be sanctified without humbling. Why? Because only those who humble submit. You can't say you love Jesus and you're humble if you're not submitting to his counsel, correction, and direction. Amen. And then his, the, the exchange of the gift is grace, which is God's plan or more of his plan. So by accepting and u, uh, utilizing humility to keep one sanctified, there's an exchange of gift. And that's God's grace, more of his plan. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may what? Exalt you in what? In due time. In other words, you're able to wait. You're not anxious for anything because you know he's going to do it because there's always an exchange of gift. Sometimes there's a delay because of a slight variance of sanctification. So God holds off on the gift. He waits until things get cleaned up. And then he releases it. That's why he says, casting all your care upon him, for he what? He cares for you. Resist him steadfast. Oh, be sober and be vil vigilant, right? Be alert and be what? Consistent. Be alert and be what? Consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour or sway or persuade. It says, resist him steadfast in the faith. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Can you resist him if you're unsanctified? No. That's where people have a problem. And they're blaming everything else. Well, this, this, this. Man, you didn't resist because you're not sanctified. There's an open door somewhere that's misleading you. That's the job of the devil, isn't it? To persuade people, to bring them other a false delusion. Amen? Or false perception. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while, in other words, you woke up, <laughs> then he can what? Perfect you. Establish you. Strengthen you and do what? And then settle you into a place of sanctification. And to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And I'm going to close at Psalm 103. gift of blessing. You know those that are a gift to God. Amen. And you know that there are those that are not. You know the ones that are sanctified and the ones that are not. And there are those who are those who are being sanctified. God has grace and mercy on them, doesn't he? Amen. Psalm 103, is everybody there? Let's speak it. <laughs> What's the first word? Bless. Bless who? The Lord. Oh, my soul. Do we bless him with praise? Do we bless him with worship? Did you bless him today with all of your heart? Well, you know what? That means something's coming. Something's coming. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul. And forget not his benefits. Woohoo, you get benefits. There is part of the exchange. Who forgives all your iniquities. Thank you, Lord. You ain't made it yet. <laughs> and we ain't made it yet. <laughs> Who heals all your diseases? How many of y'all know you're going to get sick again? No, you don't know you're going to get sick again. <laughs> you're not going to accept that, are you? Sheesh. 
You're not going to go get sick on purpose, are you? But you may say, shake somebody's hand who's loaded with the flu. You may touch a doorknob that could be loaded with sprondies, sproniators. You can catch a sickness or disease, but it doesn't mean it's going to kill you, right? Oh. You think sanctification will help preventing us from getting ill? Well, snap. Who forgives all your iniquities, amen? That's when you repent. Lord, forgive me. You know, everything that usually comes is self-inflicted. The enemy is just waiting for an open door. Amen? And, and until we've repented for our forefathers, we're going to still receive everything that they've done. Who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. Snap. And it redeems your life from what? Destruction. What a gift of benefits. Daily loads us. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. That's an exchange of gift. Healing. Forgiveness. Youth. Amen. Redeems us from our life from destruction. He goes before us as a consuming fire. He snares our enemies. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. Daily loads us with benefits. Blesses our socks off so we can get new ones. His blessings just never stop as long as you are a blessing to him. Obedience is a blessing to him. Consistency is a blessing to him. Sanctification is the blessing to him. Amen? Praise God. So let's be the gift of God. Amen? And a gift to the world that we may be a sign and wonder of what he's done in our life. Father, we thank you for your glory and honor, and we praise you, and we thank you for everything you've done and what you're doing and for your word that's been imparted in us. Grab us in our hearts, so that we may have a full understanding of what being blessed is. Because only you are the blesser, and you establish the blessing. So help us to be sanctified in every area. Guide us, Holy Spirit. Put up the warning signs. And keep us from touching anything unclean in thought, word, or deed, that we may be a blessing to you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.